After a long silence, I take up my pen to write of him, he whom I'd followed in all his pilgrimages, and known better even than one who was a brother by the ties of blood. This man, Blue, looks at Sarah as his mentor, his teacher, his friend. Es una relación muy estrecha, muy íntima, muy fuerte. They realized they had the same desire to go to America. And when they discovered that about each other, it really reinforced the bonds that they had for each other. Fray Junipero Serra and Fray Francisco Palo are the St. Peter and St. Paul of modern California. So Palou, when he was coming to Carmel, probably knew that he was going to be seeing him for the last time. At the very heart of all history is the unvarnished truth. The events I tell, witnessed by my own eyes, but long withheld by a feeling of unworthiness, must now be known. Know first that what I tell has come under my personal observation, and know that the one I write of was not a soldier, but a knight, bringing not a sword, but a cross. as well. When he sings, when he prays, yes. When he stops, not so well. The fathers have arrived from San Antonio and San Luis Obispo. No father, just you. The letters were never sent. Not sent. The writer forgot to take them. Father President. Father Sarah. The others. They're not here. Only me. The letters were, were not sent. And the fathers from Spain. The ship brought no one. Francisco, why are we in California? To bring God to these people. And how will you accomplish such a great task? Me? Yes. New missions. Two new missions. Here. At Santa Barbara. And here. At La Purísima Concepción. You will write to the garden. He will send more friars. Francisco. You know what day it is? It's the 19th. I want you to celebrate the Mass of San Jose, our most holy patriarch. Will you do that for me? I will take my place with the choir. Of course. The young Junipero Serra was small of stature, but like the order he served, great in spirit. And like the islanders he descended from, extremely independent, 
even a bit stubborn. Lying about 70 miles off the coast of Spain in the western Mediterranean are the Balearic Islands, the largest of which is Majorca, a strategic port of call, crossroads of religion, culture, and commerce. The island has been absorbed into various empires since ancient times. The Roman, then the Byzantine, the Caliphate of the Muslims, and finally, Catholic Spain. The living descendant of this layering of civilizations is the magnificent Cathedral of Santa Maria in the city of Palma. It stands where the Romans built a temple, the Byzantines a church, and then the Moors a mosque that dominated the port for over 400 years. King James I of Aragon invaded in 1230, drove out its Moorish defenders, and began construction of the cathedral, with the largest rose window in Europe and a nave soaring 150 feet this imposing structure is today exactly as Junipero Serra would have seen it when his father brought him to Palma at the age of 15 to dedicate his life to God in the order of St. Francis. A Franciscan and professor of theology, not bad for the son of illiterate peasants, but this young man would go on to add a coastline to an empire and a realm to the church. The letters were never sent. Not sent. And the fathers from Spain. The ship brought no one. Why are we in California? To bring God to these people. And how will you accomplish such a great task? Requiem Eternum. Dona eis Domine, et lux perpetua luciat eis. Requiescat in pace. Amen. What's this? I don't know, Father. Follow. Come quickly, please. Your father, President, needs you. How is it? It appears to me that the, the Venerable Father wishes to die upon the floor. If I had walked with you, you might not have gotten to bite. Huh. If you had walked with me, you would have died. In Veracruz, you nearly died. I had a blanket. I could have covered you if I had taken that path. Francisco, we will not speak of that. What is this? I found it in the graveyard. They put it in the hands of a woman who died last evening. Shumash is sacred to them. We toil in the mystic vineyard. Yes. At night, I see them. See who? Lights. Moving in the darkness. Almas del Fuego. Moving from one place to another. Souls. We came to gather for God. And sometimes they go out. Tatn Kaum. Meiju Kutau. Kunju. Amen. You speak Pame still. We learn native languages. And we learn native symbols. <laughs> to to understand the hearts, hearts and, and the minds of native, native people. 
You learn well at San Fernando. I was young. I still see the faces in Mexico. The people loved us there. Was it not so? When I think of Mexico, I see all the mountains, the Sierra Gorda. And if you look hard enough, you'll see two friars walking into them together. Sierra Gorda region of Mexico. This forbidding territory is 150 miles from Mexico City. Sarah and Palo walked. They were labored. In nombre del Padre, del Hijo. At Loreto on September 28th, 1768, Sarah sang a high mass, blessed the assembled forces. Amen. Grouped around him were naval captains, neophyte converts, friars, and the soldados of the Loreto Presidio, most of them baptized and taught by the Jesuits. They would form the backbone of the expedition. Friar Juan Crespi, whose diaries would trace the progress of La Misión Sagrada day by day. The time had finally come. Viva el rey de España! Viva! 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 Viva la Virgen de Guadalupe! Viva! Viva! Viva Cristo Rey! Viva! Viva! Viva Cristo Rey! Viva! Viva! Viva Cristo Rey! Viva! Now go. Go and become hunters. Hunters of the souls of men. Viva! 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 When Sarah decided that he wanted to be a missionary, what really fired his imagination was preaching the gospel to people who had never heard it before. And that was what he really wanted to do. That's why he came to America. When he got to, to America, because of a variety of circumstances, he ends up spending basically 19 years working in, in Mexico uh, either among uh, Indians who had already had the gospel preached to them, the Pame Indians in the Sierra Gorda, or working uh, among people in various parts of Mexico preaching domestic missions, you know, trying to revivify the spiritual fervor of a parish or something like that. When he got to Baja, California in 1767, he again was working with, with Indian peoples who had already been evangelized, in this case by the, by the, by the Jesuits. So this is a man who 19 years had been in America and had never really had a chance to do what he came to America to do, to preach the gospel to people who had never heard it. But there were those who believed that Sarah should not be allowed to go. One of those who doubted that Sarah was up to the task was Gaspar de Portola, the expedition's military commander. He paid Sarah a visit just before they were to leave together. What brings you, Commander? I've come to ask that you remain here and send Father Palo in your place. Your leg, and forgive me for saying, your age, render you unfit for the journey. Senor, pay no attention to my years. Bringing Christ to lands where he's unknown makes me feel young again. As for my leg, Jose Maria here is a mule tender. He's working on a special cure. You are not a pack animal, father. When did you leave? Tomorrow. Hmm. Well, 
it's different. You don't have to worry about it slowing you down. So you will send Father Palo in your place? No. We will catch up with you at the frontier at Valicata. Catch up? Yes. It's Easter. I have duties to perform before leaving. There may have been an additional, perhaps more sentimental reason Sarah remained at Loreto until Easter Tuesday. That would have been 20 years to the day that he had climbed up to the shrine of Nuestra Senora de Bonani in Mallorca to say farewell to his native land and people. Now he was traveling even further from them, toward a destiny unknown. The sacred mission was to be a four-pronged assault on California, two expeditions by sea and two by land. Two ships, the flagship San Carlos and the San Antonio, sailed in advance of the land expeditions, headed by Fernando Rivera and Gaspar de Portola. It wasn't long before the ancient scourge of the mariner, scurvy, caught up with the two ships. The uh, San Carlos was the first vessel to leave for San Diego. She had a head start of several weeks. Uh, she should have had a voyage of about 50 to 55 days, which would have well within the capability of the sailors uh, without having to worry about scurvy. But there were essentially two problems which doomed the crew of the San Carlos. The first one was that the sailors had actually been active in transporting supplies to Sonora during the prior year. Delays on that expedition had kept them at sea for months. The San Carlos was followed several weeks later by the San Antonio, piloted by Mallorcan Juan Perez who would soon be encountering his own set of problems on this, one of the most difficult voyages anywhere in the world. You're fighting upwind the, the entire way. A vessel, a uh, square rig vessel, can only travel within about 70 to 75 degrees of the, the wind. So an upwind sail essentially is like a hiker going up a very steep hill. You have to switch back, back and forth, which means that you go much slower and you are going to go about four times the distance than you would if you just hiked straight up the hill. With the ships underway, Sarah began his trek to meet Portola on the frontier, visiting his missionaries at their new Baja posts as he moved north. We're on the outskirts of Loreto. It was here that Father Sarah took his first steps to California. His first stop would be at San Javier, where he would meet his longtime friend, Francisco Polo, who would be waiting for him. The 25-mile trip from Loreto to San Javier took Sarah the entire day. Bearing the name of one of the most revered saints of the Jesuit order, the mission is today very nearly the same as Sarah found it in May of 1769. San Javier mission. This is where they met. Shocked at the condition of Sarah's leg and his stubborn insistence on leading the sacred mission, Francisco staged a final dramatic argument to stop him. This is their fire dance. They worship their god of the sun. I wanted you to see it. We can teach them. They can learn. They burn fire in a pot. We burn fire in a candle. Fire is fire. Same fire, different god. Who need better? This is not Mexico. You limp past them on that bad leg of yours. And they might help you. 
and they might kill you. If you die, you will have your martyrdom and your pride. And they will still have their paganism. All you will see now is more and more paganism the closer you get to the frontier. The closer I get to the frontier, the closer I get to God. I shall never consent to your reverence going by sea. You must travel the land to take measure of its inhabitants. Sir, when I arrive at Veracruz, I travel on foot to Mexico. When I went into the Sierra Gorda, it was again on foot. I can assure you that if necessary, I will walk all the way to Monterrey. All you will see now it's more and more paganism the closer you get to the frontier. The closer I get to the frontier, the closer I get to God. Knights of the Cross, Knights of the Line, Soldier, in the trench, the gnawing feeling, the astronaut, the countdown, all the preparation is behind us. This is the moment. We're going. The order to move out came on Good Friday, March 24, 1769. The largest aggregation of men, animals, and supplies ever assembled in New Spain left the frontier outpost of Belicata, the edge of the known world, and slowly began moving north. A military expedition, it had 30 flintlock muskets and 300 pounds of gunpowder. A sacred expedition, it carried a banner of Our Lady of Guadalupe altar cloths and canopies, silver shells for baptism, three complete sets of priest vestments, silver cruets for consecrated oil and water, chalices of gold and silver, incense, candlesticks, wax, missile books with texts for all the masses of the liturgical year, and a press for making host wafers using local grains. Since an army marches on its stomach, they brought along a herd of cattle, a ton of dried figs and raisins, 140 pounds of cheese, 27 bushels of beans, 600 pounds of sugar, 1,100 pounds of chocolate, iron griddles to make tortillas, and 350 pints of wine. And most of this was only meant to last until they got there, when they would have to start living off the land. The soldier said there's a frigate in Monterrey. Yes, some friends to see you. And new friars for the missions. No. These hands help me dig graves for her fallen comrades in San Diego. Yes, Father. I remember. Danos hoy el pan nuestro de cada día. 
Perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos de todo mal. Father Vizcaíno, get up. What do they want? Pray with me. Blankets. They want more blankets, perhaps. No. I don't think so. Caino, tear me some cloth. He's dying. Father Vizcaíno, obedience. Get, get the surgeon. I'm afraid of the adults. The tent cannot protect you. Father, the surgeon, I. I order you! Back into hell, you devil! We are in control here! Father Vizcaíno! I'm right here, son. For, for your leg. For your leg. Pray with me. Dios mío, me arrepiento de corazón por verte ofendido. Pésame por el infierno merecido y por el cielo que he perdido. Ego te absolvo, en nombre del Padre, el Filho, el Espíritu Santo. Amén. Hold this tight. Know that God is with you right now in this place. Yes. Yes.
Requiem Eternum, Dona e I Domine, et Lux Perpetua, Lucia e I, Requiescat in Pace. The death of Jose.